Welcome to the second part of the principle of continuity video. But before we start analyzing the problem from the previous video, let's look at this example first. Let's say we have the same control volume as before, but we remove one control surface. So now we only have surface S1 and air entering at speed V1 or velocity V1. And the principle of continuity is true always for any control volume. Can you guess what this problem is equivalent to in real life? So we have one input to the control volume. So when the air mass enters into the control volume, what happens to the total mass? The total mass will change. And if you think about it physically or intuitively, you understand that the mass here will increase because we have continuous input of more air. So the change in mass will be positive because we have a positive input of air all the time. And if you remember from the previous video, this problem is equivalent to the air mattress when we inflate it. It will take me a moment to reinflate. It's also true for tires or anything else like balloons. The breath that it takes to inflate all those balloons. So I just wanted to give you this as an example of the principle of continuity when it doesn't look like a box with two sides. We can also have another example when the air continuously exits the box or the control volume or the balloon or air mattress. In that case, the total mass change will be negative because the air is decreasing. All right, so let's now start talking about the previous problem. I will need to add another control surface here and let's name it S2. And we have air exiting out of that control surface. And please don't confuse velocity with volume because velocity is a vector, it has a direction, and volume is just a quantity, it's a scalar. It's just the amount of air. So now let's actually integrate these expressions. And here we have a lot of assumptions because we, we are trying to make this problem simpler. We assume that the density of air is the same across the surface and inside the control volume. So the density of air will be the same in this area, inside the volume, and when it exits. We assume the velocity is low. So this term, we copy the derivative with respect to time, and since the density is constant, we can take it out of the integral as a constant multiplier. And then here we have integral over volume of little volume dv. And you remember from the previous video what that means. It's a little cube like this. And we can do the same in the second integral. We take out the constant density. So this becomes integral over surface velocity dot product surface vector equals to zero, so this part stays the same. The next step is to simplify it even more. The derivative with respect to time still stays there, density stays there, but now we can get rid of the integral because the integral over the whole volume V over little parts dV will be just the whole volume V. So this is the first term. And in the second term, we copy the density with, because it's constant. And now let's think what should we do with this integral. We could do two things. Either first we do the dot product or we do the integral. Let's do the dot product first. Now let's simplify it even more. So let me just keep this term like this for now without changes. And then let's look what dot product of V1 and DS1 will give us. It's just negative 1. So we will have integral over S, the whole control surface. Inside we have V1, DS1. We actually take care of the dot product. And remember that it's negative 1. So we add negative in the front. And then we add V2, DS2. And then let's see what the dot product will give us. It's just positive 1 because they are pointing in the same direction. So this plus stays the same. 
this is all equals to zero. But remember that this is all inside the control surface integral. Now we continue simplifying. Just rewrite this term for now. And now we can finally get rid of ds1 because we don't have any vectors inside the integral. So we simplify this expression by taking out v1 here and v2 over here outside of the integral because we assume that velocity v1 is the same over the whole area here and velocity v2 is the same over the whole area here and the integral goes here because it has a distributive property so if we have an integral of the sum that will be a sum of two integrals now let's simplify this even more so the integral over small parts of S ds1 will just give us the whole surface of s1 or the area and then we do the same with this side the integral of a control surface of little parts of ds2 will just give us the surface of s2 so now let's simplify it a little bit more by taking out the negative sign over here and multiplying the second term here by density okay and now we should look at the first term very carefully and think about what changes here with respect to time remember we assumed that density of air is constant because we assumed the velocity was low and the volume of the control volume stays the same because it's not changing we just restrict our control volume by this box so density is constant and volume is constant and what happens when we multiply a constant by a constant we will get another constant so the expression inside these brackets is a constant and what does a constant mean constant means it doesn't change so when we take the derivative with respect to time our constant inside will not change and this means mathematically that this whole term will be zero because the change in density and the change in volume is zero it's not changing so we can cross off the whole thing and simplify our expression even further so this is our very very simple expression and we can simplify it even further to get rid of this negative sign so this is our final expression now let's think about each term in this expression well we assumed that density was constant and it's the same air going through the control volume or through the box so we can divide by density and let's think about now about surfaces s1 and s2 remember this is just a rectangular box for the purpose of the lecture it's just an example to understand the principle of continuity so in this example we assumed that s1 is equal to s2 because it's a rectangular box let me write it down and then we can divide over by the surface and then what we are left with will be v1 is equal to v2 and this is a physical significance of the principle of continuity because if you think of this problem physically this just means we have a box we have two surfaces that are equal to each other and we have air entering through one side so then the principle of continuity will tell us that the velocity of air at the exit of the box will equal to the velocity of air at the entrance of the box because air cannot accumulate inside the box because we have another opening on the other side so in order for the change in air be the same we need the exiting air have the same velocity as entering air otherwise we will have imbalance so some air will need to accumulate inside the box and there's no other holes inside the box or no other volumes so there's no, nowhere for the air to accumulate and this is essentially the principle of continuity we will have equal amounts 
entering and exiting some control volume. Now let's define another new term, which is called a mass flow rate. Mass flow rate is denoted by m dot, where dot means the derivative with respect to time. So this is essentially d dt of m. And in other terms, this mass flow rate is equal to density multiplied by velocity multiplied by the control surface area. And this is true for any control volume, any control surface, and any density. So to conclude this video, remember that we had previously density multiplied by V1 by S1 equal to density multiplied by V2 S2. So now we can write this expression down as m1 dot equal to m2 dot. So the flow of air through the left hand side will be m dot and the flow of air through the right hand side or the exiting air will be m2 dot and they are equal. And this is the principle of continuity. Thank you for watching and I hope this video was helpful in understanding the principle of continuity. And don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned for future videos where we will solve problems and discuss more topics in aerodynamics.